Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to another video on suturing, and this time I'm going to show you the horizontal mattress suture. This is part of a larger training and coaching program on suturing that I created especially for doctors that are feeling frustrated and having some problems with their suturing techniques. I'm going to show you very simple, very useful suturing methods that can make your surgeries work out better and you can also enjoy the process and be less frustrated. In the previous video I showed you the X suture so if you didn't see it check it out because it'll be important for you to understand it for the future videos. It's definitely available to you. Now part of this coaching and training program on suturing I'm going to reveal to you the nine laws and I believe that once you understand the laws and you execute them, your suturing technique will be great, you'll be less frustrated, and you have better outcomes. Now, the first three laws have to do with suturing safety, the safety of the patient and your own safety and your assistant as well. Uh, other three laws have to do with the choice of suture material, depending on the procedure. And the last three laws have to do with the suture mechanics. So once you understand these nine laws, you'll be very good at suturing. And as I said, this suturing technique and method will be revealed to you in the next few months. So let's start with law number one. What is the first law of suturing, first rule of suturing? First law of suturing is actually to suture in slow motion what I call slow suturing. I notice that a lot of the doctors, once they're done with a procedure, they're very quick to suture, they're doing it very, very fast and making a lot of mistakes. And I found out that if you suture slow, you're much more accurate and precise, and you're much more safe, and much, much less uh, problems with the suturing. Now, the way I look at it, Suturing is very similar to giving an injection and an incision, making an incision, both of which are done slow. When you're giving an injection, you are very accurate. You are giving a slow injection. You're locating the particular anatomy, and you never rush an injection. It's very similar to making an incision. An incision is done in a very slow and distinct way, very accurately. And the same thing should be done with suturing. So there's no need to rush. Suture almost in slow motion. If you ever look at me suturing, I do it very, very slow. And I also get great results. And uh, I recommend you, you do that. So the first law of suturing is slow motion. Suture slow. If you suture slow, you'll be more precise, more safe. And in the future, I'm going to reveal the other rules of suturing. And eventually, you'll be a great suture upper. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the horizontal mattress suture that is used for large flaps. When you're expecting perhaps a lot of swelling post-operatively, this type of suturing will create a very nice and tight closure of the flap. You may have to place a couple of those horizontal mattress sutures. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with the straight incision line and open up basically a flap. And just to help you orient yourself, again, we have our surgical compass. And that will allow you to uh, see exactly what are the entry and exit points that I'm making. So the first entry point is on the mesiobuckle. You'll pass your needle through the flap. And you'll exit through the mesiolingual. And you pass the needle through it and pass the thread through both edges of the flap. And then... In contrast to the X suture, you'll actually come back from the distal lingual and basically then exit through the distal buckle. And at that point, you'll tie the knot and that will create your horizontal mattress suture. When you complete the suture, you'll notice that the exposed thread is creating two lines that are parallel with the incision outline. So that's why we call it horizontal. And naturally there are hidden sutures under the flap. So just to repeat the process and the path, we will start from the mesiobuckle entry point, exit through the 
mesolingual, then enter again through the distolingual and exit through the distobuccal to create your horizontal mattress suture. Now in this slide, you will see the whole process step by step from the, through all the exit and entry points and how the suture is supposed to look like at the end of the process, but also very important to see where the hidden suture is that you don't see when the uh, knot is completed. So you will use this suture when you're expecting a lot of swelling. It's a very tight closure. And when you have large flaps, you may need to place several of those horizontal mattress sutures. Now to contrast it with the X suture, it looks quite different. The horizontal mattress suture ends up having two lines, two exposed threads that are parallel with the incision line. And it's very different than the X suture that looks like an X. That's why we call it an X suture. And it's very useful for extraction sockets. So again, if you didn't see the X suture video, go back and look for it, watch it, and see the exact difference between X and horizontal mattress. So I hope this video on the horizontal mattress was very useful to you. I hope you start using it in your practice. Um, I'm looking forward to show you more, more suturing techniques and show you the whole uh, Z-pad suturing system and method and coach you on that and make sure that you are very good at suturing and having great surgical results. Uh, for more information, more videos, you can go to the website surgicalmaster.com and you can opt in, put in your name and email and this way you'll get the videos and blogs emailed to you on a weekly basis every Tuesday, I believe. And this way we can keep in touch and keep learning and getting better at surgery and suturing. And I really look forward to seeing you and working with you in the future.